out there. We're going to praise Jesus. Are you ready? Come on, let me see your hands up. Come on, we sing. You have come and we have found life everlasting. Now I think we need to give a little more appreciation for the women in our house. Come on. Well, welcome to Hillsong Church, everybody. Everybody who's connected via the screens. We're here to celebrate Jesus and honor our mums as well.
See your heart and everything you made. 
Father, this morning, we are just so grateful on this Mother's Day, Father, to be found in Your house and that You, Lord, are constant, that You, Lord, are good, that You, Lord, see the many thousands of situations that are represented in this room this morning, Lord, and that we can look to You, Lord, knowing that, Lord, You are so amazing. And we just give You our praise and our love this morning. Can you say Amen to that church? A big welcome to Hillsong Church on this beautiful Mother's Day this morning. Who is enjoying that autumn has finally come to Sydney? Okay, we've got some no's. Who's in the no camp? You'd like summer back. You like 40 degree autumns. Who likes a bit of the cooler weather? Okay, I think the cooler weather people are winning this morning. I like it for a few days, Donna. I like it for a few days. And then I want the heat again. (laughs) I want the heat again, yes. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Did your husband serve you breakfast in bed this morning? No, because no. I was up so That's, early. He's and a gentle, not his job. He's a gentleman. I'm not his mother. It's the kids. Ah. It's the kids. Aha. Uh-huh. Did the kids serve you breakfast in bed? No. no. That would only have to be because you left before they were up. That's right. That's yep. exactly right. Yep. Stacking the dishwasher will be fine. They've done I'm, that. I'm good for just They've done that, the haven't dishwasher. you? Mercy. Always, yeah, yes, yeah, done always. That. Done that. Listen, we're going to pray for some people this morning and there's a whole lot of great praise reports here. I want to show you one. This is, I've got a photo for you. This is Wendy, our latest uh, Church of the Air location. 
at Clifton Station in far out west Queensland, right out in country Queensland. We've got a picture up there we can show. Let's see. Yeah, so she's with us this morning. It's great to have you with us. Look at that, amazing. Uh, great things happening. The Colour Conference has just finished in Kiev, which is where my wife is. She's fast asleep in Kiev right now, over there with Pastor Bobby. Um, we're grateful for the, some of just the safety things that happened through the storm in Hobart. Uh, great stories coming back there. Someone with their 49th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. And someone else with their 22nd wedding anniversary. But all kinds of great things. Permanent residency. Someone's mum is here. That is beautiful on Mother's Day. We're going to pray for all kinds of situations. Now listen, we, just a moment ago, a few moments ago, I heard the church singing so loudly. Uh, it sounded like you were louder than the, the band, actually. It was, it was actually beautiful how loud we are. So can we have that same noise level when it comes to prayer? Can we pray loudly? Can we really seek God on behalf of these people? There are all kinds of situations, people that need help with provision, uh, someone to own their own house, people needing wisdom, restoration of friendships, uh, family issues, uh, praying for, someone's wanting to pray for all mums today. This is a beautiful Mother's Day. It's gonna be special right across the day. Obviously, Mother's Day means different things for different people. And if, you, if it's got a tinge of sadness attached to it, can we just say to you today, well done for being in church. Well done for being here. You're in the right place. We're gonna pray for all of these needs. Can we lift our hands to heaven? God, we thank You so much for Your kindness, for Your great love and Your grace toward us. Lord, we bring these people to You now, every need, Lord, those on the channel, those out in church of the air, Lord, people here in this room. We ask God that You would do miracles in people's lives, that Your grace would cover, Lord, that Your love would be extreme to their lives. Lord, that Your peace would invade hearts and minds. Lord, we ask You'd mend bodies and give wisdom to people, Lord. Turn situations around, we pray. We present every request to You now in Jesus' mighty Name. And everybody shout it. <laughs> Amen. So great. Well, it's nice to have you here on Mother's Day. Every Sunday is great, but especially Mother's Day. So why don't we give you a moment? Say hi, welcome someone. Say good day. turn around. We'll put a minute on the clock. You've got a minute to mingle. Church of the Air, say hi to someone. Text somebody. If you'd love, like to take your seats, that'd be good. So a very special happy Mother's Day to all the mums and all the grandmas. You know, the word honour means to place heavy weight on. And it's a great thing when across Australia today, we just, you know, the whole nation is really going to stop and honour the amazing contribution that mums make. But as a church family, we wanted to make sure that all the women in our church community, all the young women, older women, all the mums, the grandmas, the aunties, single women, everybody today has that sense of being honoured. So we've got this beautiful gift for you and it's uh, a beautiful journal. So make sure if you didn't grab that on the way in, that you get that on the way out because that's our gift to you on Mother's Day. And don't take this and gift it to your mother. You gotta go and buy us something, okay? All right, just a heads up, heads up for the budget. But that would be a great gift to give with the gift you that we've You can get it out in the resource center if you can. 
yeah. to buy it. This is for you. It's for you. Did anyone not get one on the way in? No, not Steve, the boys. It's not the boys. <laughs> We've got some yeah. other gifts too that we, yeah, we want to give away. Yeah, we've got a few things we're going to give other away things. this morning. Happy Mother's. All right, we've got a beautiful gift. We've got some, who loves a cup of tea love? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm a cup of tea love kind of girl. Some scented candles. Now, I know that men like scented candles, not just women. Harry Little, you're not getting that today. <laughs> and this beautiful piece of art here. So what are we doing with this, Joel? We need a home that is larger than mine because I wouldn't be able to hang this on. I can't find a wall in my place to put this. So someone who's got high ceilings, someone who, um, do we have a, a, a grandmother? A grandmother maybe, a grandma. Do we have any new grandmas? Any new grandmas this year? Yes. Well, oh, there's someone up here. In, you see this beautiful grandma up here in red? Okay. Happy yes, happy it's grandma. coming your way. <laughs> and we've got 20 daydream teas, Donna. 20, okay. I reckon, I reckon this needs to go to a mum who is busy with young children or babies. And us mothers know that we are amazing, right? Because we just keep everything humming. So where would there be a new mum? A new mum. Come on, point them out. Point come them on, out. Come on. Okay, I think. One down there. We're done. Okay, I think someone up here. Okay, it's over there. You oh, win look. for the number of hands pointing. Oh, look. Okay, lift your babies up. <laughs> There's a present coming your way. Any more babies in the house? Any more babies? They're probably out in the parents' room. Oh, look. Okay, yeah, no, I was just making sure mum was there as well because, you know, yeah, it's easy to go, oh, I want a gift. Um, there we go, there we go. Ah, oh, the scented candle. Wonderful. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mums. Everybody. Okay, a couple of things. You will see some uh, things in church news like the Six Hot Weekends, which is about to start. That leads us into Hillsong Conference and the Heart for the House Weekend. And if you're new to our church, it's a very exciting period of time. Uh, but the thing I really want to make mention of is the Heart and Soul Night that's coming up across all our campuses, and that's our leadership community. So if you are feeling like God is prompting you to take a next step and join us in serving, volunteering, helping to lead, do something like that, if you want to get involved in areas that you can see, but there's so many other areas. So you don't have to, it's not just about creative things, there's so many different things with uh, serving and helping and getting involved. And so that's an open invitation right now to you to join our Heart and Soul Night which is on a Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Now it's not this Tuesday, it's next Tuesday, okay? So it's in two Tuesdays time. So if I said next Tuesday, the next Tuesday is this Tuesday, but it's not this one, it's the next one. So it's next, next, right? Not the next Tuesday that we're about to have, but the next one after that. So next, next Tuesday. Like in Cape Town, if you wanna see you later, you say, see you now. And if you wanna see you real soon, you say, see you now, now, or just now weird. So heart and soul is not now, it's now, now. Just next, next, right? Next, next Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, it's next, next Tuesday too. Heart and soul, you know what it is, don't you? You know it's not this week, that's for sure. We're going to receive our giving this morning, our tithes and offerings. Come on, can we thank Donna sharing with us? Okay, this morning as we get ready to bring our, our gift to the Lord, behind me there are different ways that you can give. And for those that are new or visiting this morning, you're more than welcome, but we don't want you to feel under any pressure to have to be involved in this moment. This is for people who call Ch Hillsong Church home. Luke 21 verses 1 and 2, Jesus pulls out this beautiful example of a woman in a, in a very difficult moment in her life as an example to us all this morning. And I just wanted to encourage you from the word. It says, while Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. And then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them, for they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything that she has. The few verses before um, Luke 21, Jesus was actually rebuking Pharisees for overlooking widows. So he is in no way commending 
the injustice that this woman finds herself in. He actually is infuriated by it and infuriated by the hypocrisy. But the beautiful thing about it, I think for this, think about this woman. There's, I mean, this temple would have been packed with people and Jesus notices her. In maybe her worst season of her life, he notices her heart, he notices her example. And here we are, not quite 2,000 years later, um, you know, looking at her example and being encouraged to follow a heart like hers. Can I encourage you this morning, church, no matter what season you might be in, no matter how um, maybe unseen you might feel this morning with things going on in your life, that the good news is that Jesus loves us, He cares for us. We're not lost in this crowd and He is a rewarder. He is the one who brings justice. Amen. So this morning as we bring our tithe and offering to Him, let's pray over it because we are going to ask Him to multiply it. Father, this morning, whatever season, thank You for the good and Lord, in the difficult, we, we still honour You. We still refuse, Lord, to let our eyes get off, get off You, Lord, because You are so good and You reward us, Lord. So Father, as we bring our gift this morning, would you take it? Would you bless it? Would you use it, Lord, to help people, Father, that are desperate today? And Father, as we do this, we just know we can trust on you in your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. As the hosts serve you, we're going to check out the screens for church news. So watch the screens. Thank you. Oh, hi there. Welcome to Church News. Whether it's your first time or your one millionth time, there's a next step for everyone. Oh, maybe you'd like to get involved in a team like this gentleman. Maybe you'd like to meet people in the service you attend. G'day, guys. You look amazing. Thanks for intimidating me every single day of my life. Or maybe you'd like to join a connect group. Maybe you'd even like to run a connect group and make it awesome for others. Well, Engage is for you. Engage is a four-week experience helping you get involved in the life of Hillsong Church. And let me tell you, it's for everyone, even you, young fella. Oh, thank you for reminding me. We actually have a Next Steps app, which you can download right now. It's full of great resources and studies to help you run a connect group or even grow on your personal faith on your own time. And as always, we'll see you in the hallways. Enjoy your next step. And um, the weekend that is Mother's Day, we will actually be in Kiev celebrating with them and then we'll be home. But I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to celebrate all the women. We know that you actually are incredible. I hope you love your gift. It's not just for you if you're a biological mum, but you know what, if you're a spiritual mum in the house, if you're a woman of God in the house, we actually want to bless you with that. And then the beautiful thing is that we've actually got Sheila Walsh um, ministering right across this weekend. She's absolutely beautiful. She was stunning in Cape Town. She's a remarkable woman of God. And so I love you, Sheila. You're incredible. And you know what, church, we've got a beautiful, fun item, presentation for you. And then Sheila's going to get up. And when she does, I want you to give her the most amazing, thunderous Hillsong Australia, praise the Lord, round of applause and just welcome the Word of God in her. So love you, church. Be home soon. Can't wait to see your faces. Thank you. Love you. Bye.
never done And from my mouth So many words can come But if these words keep running from my lips I'll make a pile and then they will trip over one For these are some words to live by If only you would listen She is the mom She is our number one She cheers us on and shows us the way it's done And even though we get it wrong Her words like songs they keep on ringing on and on and on John, Brad, 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 come here, come here. You're not getting away with this one so easy, mate. This guy, Brad, runs Hillsong TV for the whole of Australia, and he's not getting away with that tap dance that easily. I just needed Sanger to know that, just in case we need footage for the future. Well done, everyone. Wasn't that incredible? Every campus, what a great presentation. Give them one more great big congratulation. Well done, everybody. Well done. Stay standing. And if you're not standing, maybe you could stand with us for a moment every other place. We just want to welcome every campus right now to Mother's Day, to Sunday. Firstly, can I say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and just a great big celebration of all girls, all females right across the life of our church. We're connected right now. Maybe if, you're, if I call your campus out, give, us, give a great big shout in your location, but we are connected right across the country in Darwin, in Palmerston and Malak, in Noosa, Brisbane at Mount Gravatt there in the city, also Brisbane West, on the Gold Coast at Surfers and Burley and Coomera, in Wollongong, Newcastle, Northern Beaches, Macquarie, Chatswood, Bondi, in the city at Waterloo and Alexandria, in the Inner West, Maryland, Hills Chinese, Greater West in Sydney, South West at Melbourne, City East, West and Greater West, Hobart, Bali, Perth, Church of the Air locations, the Hillsong Channel, the online stream, Facebook as well, and the Hills Campus. <laughs> it's great to have you in church with us today. It really is, it's a great joy. We have so many amazing preachers and teachers that take this platform and share God's Word every weekend across the life of our church. And many of them are on our own team and a lot of them also come from different parts of the world as visitors, as friends and guests. And today, uh, as just like always, uh, someone very special, her name is Sheila Walsh. Sheila Walsh, she is, uh, she's here with her husband, Barry, and um, she is a, a renowned author, sold over five million books. She's actually Scottish born, lives in Texas, and I can't think of any greater, more powerful combination than a Texan Scot. 
You're going to love her. She's got a great accent, but she's got great handle of God's Word. She's a great Bible teacher. Can we welcome every campus? Can we welcome Sheila Walsh this morning as she brings God's Word to us? <laughs> Thank you so much. Good morning, church. And good morning, all you campusy people. What's that one, Wollongong? I love that. Wollongong. That's a great name. You may be seated. What an honor it is to be here. And Joel, thank you so much. Um, thank you for this privilege. I, I just want you to know, I don't take this lightly, this honor of being here. Um, I love pastors Brian and Bobby so much. And I'm so grateful to, to Joel and Julia for just for who they are, the way they pour their lives out. And I, I know you know this, but all around the world, the impact of Hillsong Church is being felt everywhere. And it's just, it's a great thing to see what God is doing. It's almost like from, from here, these sparks going out all across the world, lighting fresh fires. So to get to be here today is just beautiful. And um, I brought a couple of photos of my mom to show you. Um, I think, yeah. That was her favorite chair, that's how I always think of her. And that was her stuffed owl called Ollie. I have no idea why she had that, but she liked it. And then I have one more photograph, I think it's the last photo I have taken with my mom before she went home to be with Jesus. So, um, gosh, how great it is to have had the privilege of having a godly mother. I had a godly mother, a godly grandmother, and an amazing great-grandmother, just who loved Jesus. Um, I have a scripture I want to share with you. Whenever I think about my mom, I think about this scripture. You know, those of you who are parents, sometimes it can be like, oh Lord, how on earth am I going to squeeze all of this into that wee person? But there's something beautiful about making the life of Christ and the Word of God just as normal as brushing your teeth, just part of your conversation all the time. So this is what it says in Deuteronomy Chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. Love God, your God, with your whole heart. Love Him with all that's in you. Love Him with all you've got. Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside of you. And get, then get them inside your children. Talk about them wherever you are sitting at home or walking in the street, talk about them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into bed at night. Isn't that beautiful? And that's my memory of my mom. Just, she would all be sitting in that chair and she'd have a little Bible beside her. And, and whether it was first thing in the morning before we went off to school or last thing at night, there would always be something about the goodness and faithfulness of God. I just want to take a moment um, Confess to you, I wasn't sure I was ever going to get to be a mom. I was 30, almost 38 when I got married. And Barry, my husband, likes to say he's a lot younger. You are not 20 years younger than me. Are you kidding? <laughs> Seven years. But, but I knew that he's, he's fantastic with kids. He loves kids. And so I said to him, listen, if you want a big family, you're going to have to find a younger model than me. Um, but he said, well, we'll just see what God does. So after we were married, um, you know, it seemed like things weren't, I wasn't getting pregnant. So I thought, well, I better go see my doctor and I can see if, you know, get some kind of 50,000 mile checkup. And so whenever you see our doctor, you have to see the nurse first. It's hard to know how to describe her. She's not a happy woman. Let me just put it that way. And so um, I had to sit down with her first and she said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, Barry and I are trying to get pregnant. And she looked me up and down and made some noise that honestly I think only a horse should make. <laughs> and then she said, how old are you? And I said, I'm, I'm 38. And she said, oh, fat chance, all your eggs will be hard boiled by now. <laughs> Seriously. I'm like, wow, bless you, thank you. But my doctor was more encouraging and she said, you know, no, she like, you know, I don't see any reason why you can't get pregnant. So I went to Costco and I, not to get pregnant. <laughs> Felt it was important to mention that. 
I know they offer lots of free things at every aisle, but not that. <laughs> so, and I bought this humongous box of pregnancy testing kits because I thought, I need to be on this. But then month after month after month, it just became clear that maybe that wasn't part of God's plan for us. Then one day I'm cleaning out the bathroom cabinet and I came across this last one and I thought, it's probably past its sell-by date by now. But I thought, I'm Scottish. I mean, I paid for this. <laughs> if I paid for it, I'm peeing on it. Let's just make it clear. So, and then came up this little plus sign. I couldn't believe it. So I thought, well, maybe it was past its sell by date. So I drove to the drugstore and I got another one. And again, I got the last, same little cross. And I thought, but I ate a lot of carbs last night. I think that's... <laughs> so I went back to the drugstore and I got another one. And the woman at the cash register said, accept it, honey, you're pregnant. <laughs> just so amazing. I mean, I just no idea that God would gift us with such... Oh, wow, such a beautiful boy. Um, I, have, I think I have a couple of photos of him. One when he's just a little lamb. Look at that. So precious. Well, he's now 21, so let me show you what it looks like now. Yeah. I heard that. <laughs> he's, he's amazing. Um, he's he's going to take his last year of uni, and he's in pre-med. He wants to be a doctor. But he wants to be a doctor in countries where they can't afford doctors. His passion is that medicine and ministry should go hand in hand. He thinks that's the total healing that Christ offers. So he's just a beautiful, beautiful boy. But every Mother's Day, I just want to pause for a moment and acknowledge that for some of you, this is a hard day. You know, for those of you who can't get pregnant, I think, especially for those of you who might have lost a child, for those of you who've gone through a divorce and now you don't have full access to seeing your children's faces every morning at breakfast or every night in bed, maybe even those who are estranged from your children or from your mom. If today is a hard day for you, I want to read you something from the Psalms that I just want to pause for that moment and, and honor you and honor what it is that you're walking through. And, but I want to read you, this is Psalm 147, verse three. And this is the amplified version. He says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrow. That's who our God is. He doesn't want you to hide your pain hide your wounds. He wants to be the one who binds them up, who brings peace and healing to you. So sometimes it's tempting when you've got a raw place to just kind of step back a little. I think Christ invites us to lean forward, to come right forward and allow him to wrap his arms of love around you. I brought three things with me from Dallas, Texas that speak <laughs> I said, oh, Longhorns? No, 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 my son goes to Texas A&M. You're our enemies. <laughs> no, not really, you have a great team. Ours is just a wee bit better. <laughs> no. No. Hook'em, isn't it? Hook'em horns? Yeah, uh-huh. I'll carry on, okay. But these three things speak of the legacy that my mom left me. And three things are kind of written across my heart and I pray that today God would do that for you. Number one, the gift of grace. You cannot earn it. This is my mom's Bible. And she was given it in 1942, when she was 12 years old. It, the print is so small that at my age, I'd need binoculars to read it. But, she scribbled something into the back of it, obviously when she was just a little girl. And it's in pencil, and it's almost faded, but I can still read it. And it says this, grace is undeserved favor. 
It's love stooping. Love stooping down. I love that. Love stooping down. You know, I found a verse in one of the Psalms, Psalm 18, 35, talks about that. It says, you give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. What a picture of God stooping down toward each one of us. Isn't that beautiful? That the almighty God would stoop for you and me. But then if you move on and you read in Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 11, it's one of my favorite verses in all of scripture. I think because I grew up in Scotland, we have sheep by the boatload. There's just everywhere you go, there's just sheep, sheep, sheep. And they're all white because it rains so much in Scotland. So they're lovely looking sheep, but there's something powerful. Do you ever think that God's speaking to us all the time? You know, it's like we think, well, I'll go to church, I'll go to connect group, and I'll hear from the Lord. God is speaking to us all the time. Everywhere you look, every single day, when I get up, I pray this prayer, Lord, today, give me eyes to see what I would miss without you. Give me ears to hear beyond what somebody might be saying to what's actually going on inside. So this verse is just beautiful. Psalm 40, verse 11 says this. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. You know, when I think of the Psalm that says, you stoop down, how else could a shepherd pick up a lamb unless he stooped down? There's um, a lesson that I learned even as a child about lambs. My mom was a farm accountant, so she did the, the accounts for all our local shepherds, and which meant that I got access to whenever I wanted to go and watch the lambs being born. And it's such a beautiful sight. We've never seen a lamb being born. They come out so wobbly, but within two minutes, they're just springing across the field. But there's something that happens in the shepherding community. And it's not just in Scotland, it's the same in New Zealand, anywhere that there are sheep. Every now and again, a ewe will give birth to a lamb and immediately reject it. And the shepherd can try and push the lamb back towards his mom, but that mother will literally kick the lamb out of the way. So if the shepherd doesn't intervene and care for that little lamb, the lamb will die, not of hunger, but of a broken spirit. They call them bummer lambs. So what the shepherd will do is that he'll take this little bummer lamb into his house and he'll keep it warm by the fire and he'll feed it with a bottle. And at some point during any day, every day, he'll pick that little lamb up and hold it close to his heart so the lamb can hear a heartbeat. And when the lamb's strong enough, he'll put it back with the flock. But this is a part I used to love seeing as a girl. He'll come to the edge of the field in the morning and he'll call out, sheep, sheep, sheep. The first ones to run to him are the bummer lambs because they know his voice. Does a shepherd love his bummer lambs more than the rest? No, but they just believe it. They know his voice. John chapter 11 said, my sheep know my voice and they're not gonna, they're not gonna follow anybody else. Maybe you feel a bit like a bummer lamb today. Maybe you feel that you were rejected. Maybe you feel that you were kicked away when what you expected was to be loved. I know what that feels like. I, I shared with church before, and if you were here, um, that I ended up in a psychiatric hospital when I was 34 years old, diagnosed with um, clinical depression. And I felt like such a failure. I had gone to seminary when I was 19 in London to train to be a missionary in India. But do you know why? Because I couldn't think of anything I would hate more. Honestly, I thought if I do something that I would really hate, it'll show God how much I love him and he won't stop loving me. When I look back on all my teenage years, 
I, I didn't do what a lot of my friends did. I didn't, I didn't sleep with anybody till I was married. I didn't drink, I didn't do anything, but I did all the right things for all the wrong reasons because I didn't want God to stop loving me. I thought I need to get it right, I need to be perfect. But then when you end up in a psych hospital, the game's pretty well over. But I discovered when you are broken, when you're on the floor, it reminds me when David said in Psalm 34, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I actually wrote in my journal that very first night in the hospital, I never knew you live so close to the floor. See, I'm used to singing and talking about God's majesty and his, as we should. But let me tell you today, if you are on the floor, the shepherd is close to you. I will be a bummer lamb until the day I see Jesus face to face. But it's not the bad news anymore, it's the good news. Now does Jesus love his bummer lambs any more than the rest of the family? No, but we just actually dare to believe it, that at the worst moment in our life, with nothing left to commend us, that the shepherd reached down. The shepherd reached down and loved us back to life. I honestly think we understand grace the most when we think we deserve it the least. We understand grace the most when we think we deserve it the least. I know you're all watching from lots of different places. And if there's just one of you and you think today I've gone too far. You know, so many times I've said to the Lord, okay, I'm done doing that, I'm done doing that, I'm back. I'm... And then you've fallen again and you think I've gone too far. I just want you to know it is not too late. If you have a pulse, if there's not a white chalk mark around your body, it's not too late to let the shepherd stoop down and pick you up and hold you close to his heart. So that's the first gift I received from my mom. The gift of grace, finally understanding you can't earn it. Here's number two. This doesn't sound so much like a gift, but it's one of the most profound gifts of all. The gift of tough times that show you you can make it through. These are, and I have to be careful how I pick these up because they're actually a little bit broken. These are the pearls my mom wore on her wedding day and she gave them to me. I have this gorgeous picture of her um, coming out you know, of our little Baptist church in Scotland with these pearls around her neck and her beautiful dress and her shiny raven black hair. That's the color hair I used to have. I went back to my hair salon the other day and I said, do you think I should go back to my natural color? And he said, you no longer have a natural color. So, <laughs> good to know, but I digress. Pearls, there's something profound about pearls. You may know this story, but I mean, the way a pearl is formed is when a grain of sand gets inside an oyster and starts to irritate it. And the, the piece of sand irritates the oyster, and the way that the oyster responds is it coats that grain of sand with saliva and calcium. And it takes a long time. Do you know it can take three years to make one beautiful pearl? I think a pearl shows us that a pearl is simply a victory over tribulation. Something beautiful that came from the least expected place. Life is full of irritations. Irritating people, irritating drivers, irritating bosses. But you know what? We have a choice. We can either see them as things that are punishing us or things that are polishing us. You see, I watched my mom all the years growing up. After my father's suicide, we lost a lot materially. We lost our home, we lost our car. We moved into government housing. We got free school meals. 
Pretty much everyone in the school knew that we were the poor kids from the wrong side of track. But my mum never made us feel like that. Because every, I watched it. I mean, I, I watched this process of pearl making in my mum's life. And irritation would come in. And she'd coat it with prayer. And with faith. And with love. Until she left a string of pearls in my life. Because I watched how she lived. I remember very practically the way that my mom's faith impacted me. You know, there was many times when we would, she got her widow's pension on a Monday and often on a Sunday night we didn't have dinner because she'd simply run out of money. And I remember one time when she said, you know, your brother needs new long trousers for school. And she said, we don't actually have the money, so let's ask Jesus for them. I remember thinking, does Jesus keep long pants in heaven? <laughs> so we knelt around the fire and my mom just very simply laid out her need. You know, I know you care for his Lord. Stephen needs these. I don't have enough money. So thank you, Lord, for your provision. Three or four days later, somebody arrived at our doorstep, one of my mom's friends from church, and they, she stayed for tea. And then as she left, she left a package. And it was three Long pairs of trousers, exactly the size my brother needed. So I said to my mum, did you tell her about that? See, I've always been a woman of faith. <laughs> and my mum said, no, no, I told Jesus, remember? So I just, I mean, some of you in here um, have lots. You know, you've got nice homes and nice cars and best days of your life. Some of you don't. Some of you even listening in, you're like, no, I don't get to live a fancy life. It doesn't matter. To heaven, it doesn't matter. Every little irritation that comes into your life, will you coat it in prayer? Will you coat it in love? Will you coat it in faith? Will you leave a string of pearls for all of those who are watching you? The gift of tough times. It's never too late. I saw that with my mother-in-law. When, when Barry and I were serious with each other and I got home to go home and meet his mom and dad, I could tell that his dad and I were going to be great friends. But I could tell his mom wasn't thrilled that there was another woman in his life. And after we got married, I said, listen, Barry, let's invite your mom and dad to come and stay. You know, I want her to understand she's not losing you. She's gaining me. <laughs> that was a tougher message to sell than I realized. So she came and stayed for a week. And after the first day, she stopped talking to me completely. And I said, Mom, have I hurt your feelings? Nothing. I said, listen, if I've done something, please tell me. But if you don't talk to me, I don't know what I've done. And she wouldn't. So that night, Barry said, listen, Mom, this is my home. This is my wife. You need to be able to talk or else you should just go home. So she went home. <laughs> and not long after that, I got pregnant with Christian. And at that point, I was traveling 30 weekends a year doing arena events with something called Women of Faith. And so Barry and I just took Christian with us everywhere we went. And Eleanor called one day and she said, um, I've just been told I have liver cancer. I have 18 months to two years to live. And I said, look, mom, let me fly into Nashville. We have a great hospital. Let me take you and get a second opinion. But the doctor agreed that was her time frame. So she went home. And then a couple of days later, she called me back and she said, I've made a decision. And I said, okay, what, what is that? She said, I've decided for at least the next year, everywhere you go, I'm coming with you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and I said, but mom, what about your, your chemo treatment? And she said, I'll just take your schedule to the doctor and ask him to work around it. And in my heart, I, mean, I heard my father say, Sheila, just get out of the way. So for the next 13 months, she traveled with us everywhere we went, 30 weekends a year, and she didn't like me one bit more. <laughs> but she was wonderful with Christian, so I just got out of the way. And when it became clear that God wasn't going to heal her on this earth, um, she had hospice care in her home, so Barry and Christian and I just moved in so we could help William take care of her. And I would take the night shift. She had a big old hospice bed and I would get in beside her and 
she loved the old hymns of the faith, so I had a hymn book, and I would just quietly through the night just sing through the hymn book. And then one night when I thought she was asleep, she said this, if it was you, God would have healed you. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, Sheila, I've done some things in my life I'm not proud of, things you don't know about. And she said, I know I've made your life miserable. I'm like, I'm sure I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> and I said, listen, mom, God does not love me one grain of sand more than he loves you. I said, what did you sing to Christian this morning when he climbed in bed with you? I'll give it my best shot, but I've got bronchitis. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Come on, you know it. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. I watched my mother-in-law find in her dying what she'd longed for in her living, a relationship with God based on nothing she brought to the table. When she finally began to understand and was able to open up and let the love of God pour into every cell of our being. In the end, we became as close as a daughter and a mother could ever be. I had ordered um, a new piano for her church because I wanted to have something there that would, with a plaque that would honor her, but also because anytime I went to that church, I had to sing. And the piano had so much missing But the day it was delivered, it was actually her memorial service. And the very first thing we got to sing was, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. A gift of tough times, you can make it through and you can be polished till you shine. The third gift that my mom left, written deep, etched into my heart, is the gift of saying yes. When you do that, you can change your world. A couple of years ago, I got a phone call in the middle of the night. It's never good news when somebody calls you in the middle of the night. They don't call to say, oh, you've won something in the middle of the night. And it was my sister Frances to tell me that my mom had taken her last breath on earth and her first breath in the presence of Christ. And even though I knew she was getting older, she was 88, I just still wasn't quite ready to say goodbye to my mom. So I flew home to Scotland, and in Scotland we don't have what they have in America where they have viewings and there's an open casket and... When somebody dies in Scotland, a family member will bring an outfit and they're placed in a simple pine box and that nobody sees them again. But when I got home, I called the funeral parlor and I said, I know we don't do this, but could I see my mom? And they said, sure, Sheila, you come along. So I went down this little cobbled street where I used to walk home from school and knocked on the door and this sweet woman said, she's just right behind that door. So I went in and there was my mom laying in the pink suit I'd sent her the Christmas before, looking so beautiful. And I knew she wasn't there. I knew she was home. But it was important for me to kneel beside her casket and say, well done, mom. You did it. You made it all the way home. Despite everything that happened in life that made life challenging and hard, you said yes every day to Jesus. My sister um, and I spent a little time after that at the place where my mom had lived the last two or three years. She had Alzheimer's. So our church bought a huge house and converted it so that 10 of our senior members who weren't able to take care of themselves could live there, which was fantastic. And so Francis and I are going through all my mom's stuff 
And she said, now, mum wanted me to have her gold watch, but she, she wanted you to have her engagement ring, but I can't find it. So I said, well, I'll go and ask the matron if she knows where it is. So I went down to the little matron's office and I said, hey, do you by any chance know where my mum's engagement ring is? And she said, hmm, there's a story there. I said, oh, do tell. <laughs> and she said, well, one night your mum was sitting in the lounge with two of her friends and one of them had a big box of chocolates that someone had given her for Mother's Day. And your mum looked at her chocolates and she looked at her hand and she said to this woman, I'll swap you. <laughs> and so she gave this woman her engagement ring and she ate all the chocolates. And she said, I'm so sorry, I can get it back for you. And I was like, no, absolutely not. My mum enjoyed the chocolates, let her enjoy the ring. Because there was only one thing I wanted. It was this. This little picture that's hung above my mum's bed all my life. It's just two words. Yes, Lord. Somebody made it for her when she was a little girl. They embroidered it back when they used to do that stuff. And every single day of my mum's life, she woke up under that banner of, yes, Lord. And no matter what the day had been like, when she laid her head on the pillow at night, it was the, a resounding, yes, Lord, in her spirit. And my sister said to me, Sheila, that's not worth anything. I said, Francis, it's worth everything to me. I used to tease my mom about it. I used to say, mom, you don't know what you're saying yes to. She would say, no, but I know who I'm saying yes to. It changed her life. It changed my life. Do you know what a difference it would make in your life? If you woke up every single day and before you had to bump into a person, you had a yes, Lord moment with him. Do you know how that would change your life? And see, to be able to do that, you have to believe that God is trustworthy. You have to believe that God is for you, that God knows you, that he cares about you. But that was the legacy that my mom gave to me. Not only that you can't earn the grace of God, she taught me about the gift of tough times. You see, you don't usually put gift and tough times together, but they are. You see, anybody can go through tough times and complain about it and think this isn't fair because life isn't fair. Let's think about it. Fair doesn't live here, but Jesus does. Fair doesn't live here, but Jesus does. So when Peter says in his first letter, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that's within you. That means to me that you and I have to live lives that raise questions. Why are you so full of peace when you're going through this? Why didn't you lose it with that woman? Why didn't you do this? What is it about you that's different? It's the gift of saying, yes, Lord. See, I believe that when you and I walk into a room, the atmosphere should shift because of who lives inside of us. If we believe what we say we believe, it could change every single day. I found out um, two years ago that I might be about to lose the ability to walk. Just came out of nowhere. It's excruciating pain. And uh, first of all, I was sent to a pain management specialist who did all he could do. And he said, there's, there's nothing else I can do. Then I was sent to see a neurosurgeon. And so I had the whole, the CAT scans and all, you name it. And they said, well, yeah, you've got, um, you've lost a lot of the, what you should have in your spine. And now there's just bone, rubbing on bone and pressing on nerves. And we, can, we, can, we will operate if you want us to, um, but you just need to know there's a 50% chance that you will not be able to walk after the surgery, but you should be pain-free. Don't you just, and I don't mean this lightheartedly, I love it when life circumstances land on the plate with what I say I believe. I say I believe God is good, that God is powerful, 
that God has promised to bring good out of every situation. He doesn't say every situation's good, but he will bring good from it. And so I said, okay, let's, let's go for the surgery. And I'll never forget that morning. My surgeon came in and he said, um, I'd like to introduce you to this other surgeon. There are going to be two of us doing surgery. And I said, why, why do you need two? And he said, well, we'll go through your back first of all and remove a couple of discs. And then I have to go through your front. So this surgeon is going to hold your organs. What do you say to somebody like that? <laughs> Please note where they were. <laughs> but here's what I want you to know. God has been so good in my life. Life has been hard, but God has been just ridiculously good. I gave my life to him when 11, at 11, I'm now 61. 50 years of the relentless goodness of God. And so while I'm being wheeled into surgery, and usually they'll give you something that kind of makes you a little sleepy before you go in, which apparently you cannot buy in Walmart. I tried, it's not available. <laughs> But they didn't give it to me that morning, and so I'm kind of awake. And as I'm being wheeled in, the nurse said to me, what are, you, what are you singing? And I said, I surrender all. And as you can see, the surgery was a great success. But here's the truth. Whether it had been or not, God is still good. And I am determined for the rest of my life to live a yes, Lord, life. So I just wonder, I've talked about the gift of grace, the gift of tough times, and the gift of saying yes. But I'm wondering if there's anyone here or watching us, and you don't really know Jesus that way. You know, maybe you go to church and you go because your family go, or because it's Mother's Day and you're supposed to go but you know that you really don't know this Jesus. Today could be the day that would change everything. I don't want one person to walk out of today not having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's not about you being good enough. It's just about you showing up and saying, I need you. Jesus is here ready to pick up every little bummer lamb. So I'm gonna ask if you would all, Bow your heads and close your eyes. And wherever you are watching, there are people there with you, people want to help you. But in this house here, if you know that you do not know Jesus, that kind of, not religion, but a real relationship with Him, I want to pray a prayer. I want to stand right beside you and pray a prayer as you come into a new relationship. Maybe you used to come to church and you've just walked away and you think it's too late and I've done too much. It is not too late. And Christ covered it all. If you want today to be a new beginning, I wanna ask you to do something really simple, just wherever you are, I want you to quickly just stick your hand in the air and put it back down again and say, Sheila, include me in that prayer. So wherever you are right now, would you raise your hand? Wherever you are, Yes, I see you there. Over here, anybody over in this section here, if you want to know Jesus as your own personal Savior, Lord and Shepherd, just raise your hand up really quickly. And let me pray for you. Wherever you are watching, there's people there that see you as God sees you. So let's pray together. I wanna to ask if you'll all just repeat this prayer after me line by line so people don't feel alone. Father God, thank you for loving me. Jesus Christ, thank you for dying for me. I am a sinner and I wanna be saved. I believe you're the son of God, that you died and rose again. I give you my life in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, there is a big party going on in heaven. Your names and all the balloons. But I just want to take another minute or so before we move into some more worship. 
I just want to talk today to any of those bummer lambs out there who feel a little bit lost. Yeah, you have a relationship with Jesus, but you found it hard to reconcile your circumstances with your belief. And perhaps today you're beginning to see in a fresh way the way that the, the Lord will take the things that the enemy intended for evil and bring good to polish you so that you become a pearl in the eyes of the Lord. I think it's interesting that in Revelation 21, when John is given this picture of a new heaven and a new earth, and he describes what it will be like as we walk in, he said, there's 12 gates. Every one is made from a single pearl. Don't think God doesn't understand your suffering. God does. He has been through the refiner's fire with his son. So if today you want to say, Lord, instead of just wondering why my life's shown up the way it has, from today onwards, I am going to live a yes, Lord, life. I wanna invite you to get up from wherever you are and join me here at the front. So together we can say, Lord, we hear you and we're responding in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, just come, we'll wait for you. When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grace, I see Jesus. From death to life, I will sing your praise. When I see that cross, I see freedom. I see that grave, I see Jesus From death to life, I will see make your way. We'll wait for you. God will wait for you and we will wait for you. But let me pray for those of you standing here at the front. Father God, how full of grace you are. Your love is overwhelming. Your mercy, your grace, the tenderness of a shepherd, of a God who would stoop down to pick up his lambs and hold them close to His heart. Father God, I pray that where there has been brokenness, You would speak wholeness. Where there's been fear, You would invade it with Your peace. Where there's been sorrow, there would be an explosion of joy. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' Name that You would teach every one of us to walk into every day saying, Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, let's worship. When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I see Jesus. From death to life, I will see you praise. When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I see Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow, what a great morning. What a great, great morning for all those that have responded, men and women that have come down the front, um, those that are still in seats. God is so close. His love and His grace towards you. Be a great thing for us to continually remember and realize. Yeah? yeah? So good. I don't want to disturb the moment that's happened here. If you want to keep um, talking with people or just off to the side if you want, but I'm going to ask everyone to take their seats for a moment. And if you're with someone and you still want to, you're down the front, you want to go just off to the side for a moment and talk to somebody, let us pray for you. But I do want to make sure just a couple of things before we leave today. Um, while we're all connected. If you prayed that prayer a moment ago when Sheila was asking people to respond to Christ and to surrender their lives to Jesus, uh, we want to get a Bible to you. There were many people that lifted their hands, uh, which is uh, often a thing that we ask for, uh, but you may not have lifted your hand. It's not whether you lift your hand up or don't, it's whether you call out to Jesus. It's all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So please, at the end of the service, the best way for you to get one of these free Bibles is as you make your way out, into foyers, you'll see Bible pickup areas, you'll see some of our team holding this up in the air, trying to get your attention uh, because we wanna get one of these to you. There's a card on the back and if you fill that in, it just helps us help you take that next step uh, towards Christ. The other thing I would encourage you highly to do is jump into that Engage class. Uh, it's a four week experience. We understand more about the Bible, more about Jesus, more about church, uh, more about your involvement in God's kingdom. And if you can't hang around today, at least put your name down for next week. But just sign up to engage and get part of that. It'd be great. And come and get one of those free Bibles would be fantastic. Let us help you in any way we can. We're going to take a moment and receive a love offering for Sheila and Barry. Um, there's envelopes that probably honour under your seats. If you need one, just put your hand up and one of the team will bring one to you. If you need a pen or something, uh, you can fill in your details in the back. Uh, one of the most convenient ways to do these things is obviously on the giving app that we've got. You can download that at any time. Um, it's the easiest way to do it. But if you, I'm going to ask the team to come, uh, the host to come and get ready to serve us. Uh, we, we, uh, sometimes we do this only when we have people that come and visit our church and speak who are not already on staff at a local church somewhere. Uh, Sheila and Barry obviously go to a local church, but they're not on staff at a local church. And you already heard her saying that she travels around the world. And so really it's up to environments like this, people like us, to be able to say, we really appreciate what you've done for us and to really be a blessing back to them. And that's what helps them keep doing this. It's important to note that we are never asked how much we're meant to give, what we're meant to do, that they don't ask us. And so this is up to us how generous we want to be at this moment, which is, uh, it's beautiful for us to be able to decide that and what we can do, which is really cool. Didn't you enjoy that? Is it impacting? Oh, man. And I ask the team to pass the containers. You can give as the containers make their way down your row. And this will be a great thing for us to do to help make sure they leave blessed. They sure have blessed us. Sheila, obviously your depth of experience is something you bring to the table, but what stood out to me more than that was your depth of experience with the Lord, uh, not your experience in life, uh, though it's been wide and varied. It's your experience with God's Word and relationship with Him that has been all weekend I've just found completely overwhelming and stunning. And we really appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you for taking time to pray about what to say when you get here. Sure has made it a great Mother's Day weekend for us, which is cool. Now listen, while those containers are going through, I need to let you know uh, there is no Sunday night church unless you are in Bali. All right, in Bali, we are having Sunday night church because we're starting a brand new service in Bali tonight. Two services now in Bali and Pastor Robert Ferguson is already there getting ready for tonight. You're gonna have a great night there in Bali. The reason we're doing services in Bali is because Mother's Day is December 23. I know, I know, right before Christmas. It's because it's a different nation. But anyway, they're having Sunday night church. So you be blessed while we are all relaxing with our families, having high tea, or whatever you do on a Mother's Day afternoon, which would be good. Can we stand together? Again, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the women. We love you, we appreciate you. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing in our hearts, what you're doing in our church, in our community. 
We thank You for Your love, God. We thank You for the power of Your Word. It's living, it's active. It changes us, feeds us, sustains us. We ask for Your blessing upon every person as they go, every campus, Lord. May Your face shine upon them. May we realise it. May Your peace be upon them. Lord, light up the path that they walk this week. Be ever close to them, we pray in Jesus' Name. Amen. We love you, church. You have a fantastic day. Enjoy it. We'll see you next week again. All right, church, we're going to sing one more song together. Come on, let's, let's all get into it. Hands up. And you have come and we have